In this tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, the inverse function and its properties. And I'm going to talk about functions in general, but all the examples have to do with linear functions. And there are inverses of other functions, the linear ones, like quadratics, for example. But we're mainly going to talk about just linear functions, because this is an introductory tutorial lesson on the inverse. So inverse are a type of opposite function. The inverse of a function un undoes the original function. Whatever the original function does, it does the opposite. Uh, kind of like uh, you start with something and you do some operations, and then the inverse just gets back you back to where you began. And in the first example, we have this function that multiplies by 2, and then it subtracts 4. So what does the inverse function do? So it has to do the opposite to get back to the, like, the original value. So it has to do the opposite in the opposite order. So if we multiply by 2 and subtract 4, this is the opposite of this is what we have to undo first. So the opposite of subtracting by 4 would be to add 4. And then the opposite of multiplying by 2 would be to divide by 2. So the inverse would add 4, adds 4, opposite of this, and then divides by 2. So I have a table of values down here, and there's no particular reason I chose 0, 6, and 9. I could have chosen other numbers. I could have chosen negatives, fractions. I chose whole numbers here to make that part simpler, because uh, I'm not, this lesson isn't about like multiplying with fractions, for example. It's about what inverses are. So, uh, so the original function, so this is again the original function, and this is going to be the inverse over here. So the original function multiplies by 2 and then subtracts 4. So if we multiply 0 by 2, that would be 0, and subtract 4, then we would have negative 4 here. So the original function has the point 0, negative 4 on it. Uh, 6, uh, if we multiply that by 2, that's 12. And if we subtract 4, we would get 8. And then last, uh, number 9 here, if we were to multiply that by 2, that would be 18. And 18 minus 4 would be 14. So there's an example of three ordered pairs that are on the original function. So what's on the inverse? So let's say I chose, for example, and again, this is random. Let's say I chose the number 10 to be on the inverse, uh, the x value for the inverse. So we add 4 and divide by 2. That's what we think the inverse is. And I'm trying to show through this table that this is going to be the inverse of this function. So if I were to add 4 to 10, uh, that would be 14. And divide by 2, that would be 7. And you see, if I randomly choose a value for x, it really doesn't do much to demonstrate that this is the inverse of this, because I'm looking for ordered pairs that are opposite to what's here. So I randomly chose 10, gives me the point 10, 7. That's great. That's a point on the inverse. But it really doesn't help to demonstrate that this is the inverse of this function over here. What I really want to do is take these negative 4, 8, and 14, and show that the inverse gets them back to being the 0, 6, and 9. So what I'm going to do is instead use negative 4, 8, and 14 for the x values here. Because I want to demonstrate that the inverse is going to take these and change them back into 0, 6, and 9. So if we take negative 4 and add 4, well, that's 0. And divided by 2, that would be 0. Okay, so see, this is demonstrating that uh, negative 4, uh, 0, negative 4, it takes a negative 4 and returns it back to 0. And then the 8, okay, we're going to add 4. See, I want to show that the 8 is going to change back into 6. So we add 4 to 8, which is 12, and then divide by 2, which is, of course, 6. And then 14 plus 4 would be 18, divided by 2 would be 9. Okay, so it did change 8 back into a 6, and the 14 back into 9. So this, uh, this is the inverse. It dem that uh, does demonstrate that it is the inverse. Now let's take a look at this from an algebraic point of view. Okay, the original function multiplies by 2 and then subtracts 4. So it could, if I use x and y for my variables, x is the independent variable, y is a dependent variable, then multiplies by 2, so x gets multiplied by 2, and then we subtract 4 from it to get the y value. Okay, so that's the original function using x and y for the uh, independent and dependent variables. The inverse function should have x and y switched, just like 6, 8 becomes 8, 6, 9, 14 became 14, 9. So the original, the, or, sorry, the inverse function, I'm going to switch x and y. So instead of y equals 2x minus 4, it would be x equals 2y minus 4. So I switched x and y. 
So this is how you algebraically we have, an, have an, the equation of the function or, or relation, uh, how you algebraically find the inverse. So this actually is the inverse, but we normally solve for y because y is a dependent variable. We normally solve in terms of the dependent variable. So I'm going to solve for y here. So the first thing I'm going to do is rearrange and get the 2y term alone. I'm going to add 4 to both sides, or some people say bring that to negative 4 over, and it'll be an x plus 4 on the left. So x plus 4 equals 2y. And then I want to solve for y, so I'm going to divide out this 2. Now I can't just divide out 2 on that side. We have to do the same thing on the left as well. So these 2's divide out, and we'd be left with y. See, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that's why it's just a 1y here. y equals x plus 4 over 2. Now we normally, I'm just going to switch both sides here uh, and write it with the y on the left, because that's a normal way to write it. Uh, so y equals x plus 4 over 2. And so this actually, if you look at the inverse, inverse adds 4. See, it's actually, it's, that's what the inverse is doing. It's adding 4. And then it's dividing by 2. So x plus 4 and then divides by 2. So you can see the inverse operations here. Inverse of multiplying by 2 and subtracting 4. Now the symbol for the inverse is this symbol here. It looks like an f to the power of negative 1. That's the symbol for the inverse. And um, this is actually written in function notation. And technically it would be a good idea to if we'd written the original, just a little bit neater, if we'd original, written the original function in, as a function in function notation, f of x equals 2x minus 4, then this is the inverse, x plus 4 over 2. So we're going to take a look at what this looks like graphically on the second page here. So here's the two table of values, and I'm going to plot these points. So 0, negative 4 would be that point right there. And then 6, 8, we go over 6 and up 8. So there's 6, 8. And then uh, over 9, up 14. So there's three points in the original function. And we could draw a line through it. So that's the original function. And so let's plot the, uh, the, the inverse, these points now. Remember, I got the 10, 7 point. So there's 10, 7. Uh, negative 4, 0 would be right over here. Um, 8. 6 would be right there, and 14, 9. So way over to 14, up to 9. And remember, the um, if 10, 7 is on the inverse, then 7, 10, I, I plotted an extra point here. We didn't really illustrate that in the last page, but if 10, 7 is on the uh, inverse, then 7, 10 would be on the, on the original. And so there's the graph of the inverse. Now. Inverses are reflections of original functions in the y equals x line because to get the inverse, remember algebraically in the last page, we switched x and y. Uh, the y equals x line has all the points on it where y and x are the same. So here's the y equals x line. It has all the order pairs on it, like 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. That's the point 10, 10. That's the point, uh, negative 6, negative 6. It's the collection of all the ordered pairs whose x and y coordinates are the same. And so all of these points are actually reflected. And actually, let's illustrate one here. This point right here, the uh, uh, 9, 14, 14, 9 points, they are ref reflections of each other in that y equals x line. Uh, this point is exactly opposite that point in that line, of course, the same distance away. So that distance right there would be the same as this distance right here. And this actually gives a fairly convenient way for graphing inverses because you can actually just take ordered pairs that illustrate your original function, or maybe it's just ordered pairs, and just switch x and y to graph the inverse. And that's what we're going to get into in a moment on the uh, next page. So graph the inverse. So let's say we had this line. And if you had just points, well, you could just start with the points anyway. So I'm going to illustrate some points in this. So for example, this point right here is the point negative 10, 3. So we're going to start with a negative 10, 3 point. That's a random point. I, I could choose any points I want in the line. doesn't matter. Or curve. And so the inverse would have the ordered pair 3, negative 10. We switch x and y. So over here, we're going to plot 3, negative 10 down here. And then I'm going to take another point. This uh, I'm going to use uh, 5, 0 over here. 
So I'm going to take 5, 0, and it would change into, when we find the inverse of it, 0, 5. So we check some y. So 0, 5 would be this point right here. And of course, uh, a straight line, you really only need two points to draw it, although you can get more if you want. So there's the, what the inverse would look like. And again, uh, we can see that they're reflections of each other in the y equals x line. This point right here ref reflect into that one. Uh, this point over here is the image of this point over here. And of course, the uh, wherever the graphs cross, whether the lines or curves, they would always cross on that y equals x line, a function and its inverse. Uh, last page here, uh, find the, in, now we do an algebraic part here, uh, find the inverse of f of x equals negative 2 fifths x plus 3. So just to make it a little bit simpler, I'm going to start with writing instead of f of x, I'm going to write y. And the inverse, I would switch x and y. So algebraically, we switch x and y. And so this becomes x, this x becomes y. So that actually is the inverse. But just as a, a matter of uh, uh, convention, we normally solve for y. We solve in terms of the dependent variable. So the first thing I'm going to do here to start isolating for y is I'm going to get the negative 2 fifths y uh, term alone. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides or bring the 3 over. Some people say it that way. So I would have negative 2 fifths y equals x minus 3. And I want to solve for, uh, isolate for y here. So how I get rid of the negative 2 fifths is actually two ways. Um, we could actually, we could actually divide by negative 2 fifths. But it's actually kind of messy. Um, so there is a uh, better way to do this. Better way, I guess the word better is subjective, is I could multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the negative 2 fifths. And the reason I'm multiplying by the reciprocal is because, see, this negative 2 and this negative 2, one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, they will divide out. And the same with the 5s. This 5 will divide out of that 5. And so, uh, see, if I multiply negative 2 fifths by negative 5 halves, I get 1 exactly. Um, if you want to actually do the multiplying, and actually, let me do the next. I want to do the same thing on both sides. I don't want to forget to do that. Um, see, actually, if we, if you didn't do the canceling I was talking about, negative 2 times the negative 5 would be 10. And in the denominators, the 5 times the 2 would be 10. And so that gives me 1, which is just the 1y. So uh, after that divides out, we're just left with y on the right side. y equals negative 2 fifths x, uh, two, negative, negative 5 halves times x minus 3. And so that's our inverse function. And if you look at, let's get rid of this writing here. If you look at, you can do uh, inverse operations here to also check that, that this is the inverse. See, this uh, original function here, it multiplies by negative 2 fifths first, and then, it's just a comma, and then it adds 3. So the inverse is supposed to do the opposite. So we should, sub we should expect subtracting 3 first which is what it does. See, there's the x minus 3, comma. And then the opposite of multiplying by negative 2 fifths is to multiply by negative 5 halves, which is exactly what it's doing right here. So you can look at the equation and see the inverse operations to see if it actually is the inverse, like as a, as a way to check. And that's the end of the tutorial.